Hey guys, welcome back to the winemaking series here on Craig Tube. Cheers. Mmm. I love homemade wine. It's awesome stuff. It's very easy to make. Um, so hopefully you watched the, um, I'll just put that, I'll put that somewhere else so it doesn't get spilt. Hopefully you watched the first part of this series where we actually put together this California Connoisseur wine kit. So if you haven't watched that yet, there'll be a link down below to that. You should watch that first. So it's been in the fermenter for, well, almost two weeks. Now the, the instructions say, I think they say eight days. Ideally, you would like to get it out of here and into here. Okay, it looks foggy. I just sanitized it. It's got foam in it. Don't worry about the foam. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, Ideally, you want to get it into the secondary fermenter before it's finished fermenting, but near the end of the fermentation. Well, I got busy and that didn't happen here. So this has been almost two weeks since it's been put in here, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. There's some CO2 trapped in the wine that's going to come out when you transfer it into here. So that will create a bed of CO2 on top of the wine to protect it. I've never had a problem. I've left it in here for three weeks before. I don't recommend you stray from the instructions too much until you know what you're doing and you can experiment and then you know how to fix mistakes if you make them. So if you're first starting out, follow the instructions, unlike I did, okay? Now I put a heat belt on mine because it was a little bit cold down here in the basement. I'll just release that. It's been unplugged already. Okay, we'll just set it down there. The object here now is to get the wine from here into this glass carboy, which I have down here on the floor. The foam that you see in there is sanitizer. It says Star San. It's the same sanitizer I used in the first part of this video, and it does leave foam in there. Don't worry about it. It's not hurting anything. It's not, it's, you can't, you, you're not supposed to rinse these out. So just, it's fine. Get as much out of it as you can and leave the rest. It's okay. Um, in a little basin here, which, which you probably can't see, I have a siphoning apparatus. And what that is going to allow me to do, there's a few different siphoning, ap siphoning apparatuses that you can use to transfer the wine. Um, I think your best bet, I'm just making sure that this got sanitized. Everything that touches your wine has to be sanitized with sanitizer the insides and the outsides okay very important so um i'll show you this thing when i actually get it out of here and the other thing that i have in here sanitizing whoops is a hydrometer okay let's quickly go over what this thing does i explained it last time but we'll just do it quickly again what this does is it's it's got a weight in the bottom here okay so it's got a little bit of weight to it and there's a scale on the side here there's a couple of different scales, but the one we're interested in is measuring specific gravity. And what specific gravity is, is how much buoyancy the liquid has. How much is this thing gonna float? Is it gonna float way up here? Is it gonna float way down here? So depending on where it floats, the surface of the wine is gonna land up somewhere around here and we're gonna get a reading. When you first put the wine kit together or start fermenting the wine, it's gonna be up high like this and it's gonna read somewhere around 1.080 or maybe even higher. Those numbers by themselves don't really mean much, but the instructions will tell you, you know, approximately what it should read and it should be within sort of the vicinity of that. Um, when the wine is finished fermenting, the yeast has eaten, it's almost finished fermenting, the yeast has eaten all the sugar in here and this will now not float up as high. It will now sink down much lower and it will have a lower reading. And depending on that reading, we'll know whether it's time to siphon this into here. Now, I know it is time, but I'll do this for you anyway. Normally, what you would do is you would get like a turkey baster or something, you know, whatever, sanitized, and you would bring some wine into this tube here. Don't mind the gardeners out there doing the lawns. Of course, Tuesdays are a terrible day to shoot video. And then you would put this in here. I'm just, I'm not gonna use this part, okay? I'm gonna just put that somewhere else. 
What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the uh, hydrometer right into the wine. So we're going to open the wine. You're going to hear some some noises. That's a buildup of uh, water vapor on the inside of the lid. And that's no problem. That's just going to come off. And off it goes. Just put it over there. And I'm just going to drop this. It's been sanitized. I'm going to drop it right into the wine. You're not going to see this. I should have brought my phone with me. Um, but it's, you just, I'm just going to put it in there. You give it a little spin. What the spin does is it makes sure there's no bubbles trapped on the bottom of it that are going to push it up and give you a false reading. And then I'm going to look at it. And with my crappy eyesight, I think we're looking at about one point, actually zero, zero point zero nine five. So it's, it's sticking out of the wine about this much. Okay, when we first put this together, it would have been sticking out of the wine about that much. So there's a difference there. And you can actually use those two numbers to figure out what the alcohol content is. But that's a whole other video. So, okay, so I know just by taking a hydrometer reading, and don't be afraid of the hydrometer, it's easy. I just did it. There, I'm, you know, there it is. So I'll take that out. And I'll put it in the sink over there. Okay, now we're ready. We're ready, Freddy. So let's get our siphoning hose, which has been sanitized. And then you can hear all the sanitizer coming out of it. And the way this thing works, you can get these at any homebrew supply shop. I'm just making sure all the sanitizer's out of it. Is we're gonna, we're gonna drop it into, this end of it, into the carboy always fill from the bottom and the top part of it we're going to there's a little bit of sanitizer left in there that's fine it's the type of sanitizer that doesn't matter star sand it doesn't matter and we're going to put it about halfway down into the wine and then you you just you you pump it like this a couple of times and it starts to siphon and there you have it okay Make sure there's no weird bubbles going on inside the tube. And then slowly, once you've got it going, lower it down. The reason why we're doing this, by the way, I forgot to mention, is because you're, you want to take the wine off of all of the bentonite that we put in at the beginning. Um, all that particulates that have sunk to the bottom. This is the first stage of clearing. And so what we're doing now is we're going to take the wine off of that and throw that stuff away. And in this container here, we will have a cleaner product, or at least a product that is now not sitting on sediment, because eventually we're going to have to stir this uh, in another stage coming up afterwards, after this, you know, about 10 days later. So you don't want to stir stuff into it. We're, we're, we're basically gradually getting rid of all the sediment. So... Make sure you can't hear any splashing or anything like that when you're doing this because um, you don't want to introduce any, any oxygen into the wine. Um, just be careful with it. Make sure it fills from the bottom gently. All right. I know everybody's freaking out because of the foam in there. The foam will go away eventually. And um, so this takes, this takes about five minutes. So while this is happening, what you do is you, you know, you grab your homemade wine that you made the time before this and you enjoy. So we'll come back when this is finished siphoning. Okay. Thank you. What I've got here is a little uh, sanitized little jar. I'm just going to, and my hand is sanitized. I'm just going to very carefully grab a little sample out of here. You can, you can do this. Okay, um, at this stage, you can try it to see how it's coming along. Let's see what we, sorry about the microphone. I keep forget, I keep worrying that it's not, not on right. Let's give this a try and see how, how it's coming along. That's, that's okay, that's not bad. When you first taste it, like at this stage, it's gonna taste like it's a little bit carbonated, which it is. 
there's CO2 trapped in the wine. We're going to get rid of that later on, so don't worry about that. But it's, um, yeah, it, it's working. It's working. Okay. This is getting to be close to the bottom. So what I want to do is keep an eye on if I could look through this tubing. By the way, the tubing, I'll explain in a second, but this tubing does get stained after a while in yellow from the stuff going on through it. Now, it's not a problem. Just wash it and clean it, bleach through it, sanitize it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You might have noticed that earlier. But, um, you know, it's not worth replacing it every month when it gets goes yellow. So after a while, then, you know, you can do that if you want, but it's not huge. I ran bleach through it and I got these little brushes that I put up through it and get it all cleaned out. So it's all right. You watch until the wine stops being, it's a little bit clear right now. You can see through it. Okay. Well there, I the siphon stopped. I'm going to tilt the fermenter just a little and try to restart the siphon. Okay, until I see, there it is. Okay, that was not worth doing, actually. Sometimes you get a little bit more. Um, as soon as the wine stops showing light through it, you stop it. And the way you stop it is you pull, you just pull it out, right? And the siphon will stop, and it won't start again when you put it back. So you end up with a little bit in the bottom, and that's what you want. You want to leave behind any sediment and the bentonite and all that stuff that you put in in the beginning, okay? So now you've got your secondary. That's it. Okay, did you see that? Did you see me put an airlock on that? You didn't see any of that, did you? No, you didn't because no, neither of the cameras can see it. Here, let me move this one for you. There, there is the airlock. I sanitize it, I put it in there, put some water in it, and there it is. Okay, so now what you do is you just, um, well, you, you want to lift this back up onto here now, which I'll do off camera, because I usually get some swearing going on when I do that, because it's heavy. You put it up here, and you leave it for another 10 days. Sometimes I don't leave it for quite that long. It just depends, because I know, I've done this so many times, I know how to tell, but the instructions say leave it for 10 days. So when, when, when this is ready to deal with again, we'll come back and do it. The next step is to add the rest of these packets that came with it. Okay. And I'll explain all about those more in more detail at that time. They're for clearing and for preserving. Um, and we have to degas the wine, which means we have to force the trapped CO2 out of it. So when we drink it, it doesn't taste like soda. All right, but we'll do that on the next video. So stay tuned here on CraigTube. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your homemade wine, beer, pickles, whatever it is you make at home. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.